We'll turn again now to God's Word, and this time to the book of Psalms and Psalm 69. Psalm 69 and verses 13 to 18. But I pray to you, O Lord, in the time of your favor, in your great love, O God, answer me with your sure salvation. Rescue me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Deliver me from those who hate me from the deep waters. Do not let the flood waters engulf me, or the depth swallow me up, or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, O Lord, out of the goodness of your love. In your great mercy, turn to me. Do not hide your face from your servant. Answer me quickly, for I am in trouble. Come near and rescue me. Redeem me because of my foes. We we are spending a a few weeks in this psalm, Psalm 69, and are, are thinking about the Lord's people passing through deep waters. The Lord's people passing through deep waters. And that picture is one which is both powerful and realistic. When we think about some of the experiences that we pass through in our lives, both as a church and as those who who make up the church. Most of the Lord's people, when they hear about passing through deep waters can nod their heads in a knowing way and say, yes, I I know at least something of what it is to pass through deep waters. That, That was certainly David's experience as he wrote this psalm. A couple of weeks ago, we we looked at the opening few verses of the psalm, and and the the psalm begins with David saying, Save me, O Lord, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the miry depths where there is no foothold. I have come into the deep waters. The floods engulf me. And so this psalm speaks of David. And it speaks of other believers like David passing through deep waters. But as we go through this psalm, we are also at the same time thinking about how this psalm takes us to that one who is greater than David. We're thinking about how this psalm takes us to to the Lord Jesus Christ himself. We've seen over the past few weeks that this psalm is is quoted many times in the New Testament. It's one of the the most quoted psalms in the New Testament. And it's quoted to to speak to us of, of Jesus' experience. Of Jesus passing through deep waters. Especially in his sufferings and And in his death. And we saw last week that when David passed through deep waters, he had two great concerns upon his heart. He was concerned for for the Lord's people. He was concerned for for other believers. Verse 6. May those who hope in you not be disgraced because of me, O Lord, the Lord Almighty. May those who seek you not be put to shame because of me, O God of Israel. Even as he went through these deep waters, he was thinking of, of other believers. He, he didn't want their faith to be, to be knocked and shaken. And the other great concern he had was, was for the glory of God. He says in verse 9, Zeal for your house, 
consumes me. And we saw that the same was true for Jesus Christ. That he had these two great concerns. He was concerned for his people. And he was concerned for the glory of his father. And it was these concerns that, that took him to Calvary. To save his people. To glorify his father. And those concerns for the good of the Lord's people. For the glory of God should be found in all of those who, who belong to Jesus Christ. And are saved by him. But we also noted just in passing last week. That while we should be concerned for God's people and God's glory. It's not wrong for us also to be concerned for ourselves. The, the psalm begins with David praying for, for himself. Save me, O God, he says in verse 1. And we see that further in the verses that we come to this evening, verses 13 to 18. And in these verses, we find David in prayer. Now, now of course, that the whole of the psalm is a prayer. <laughs> David is, is addressing God all the way through the psalm. But, but here in, in verse 13, he especially refers to the fact that he, is, that he is praying here. But I pray to you, O Lord, he says in verse 13. And then in verses 13 to 18, he, he pours out his heart. And he brings his fears and his troubles be before the Lord. He brings his fears and troubles before the Lord in prayer. And this is something that the Lord Jesus Christ did throughout his life and during his sufferings. That, that verse in, in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7, during the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. And one of the great blessings of belonging to Jesus Christ, one of the, the great blessings of, of the Christian life is that when we are united to him, we, we can do the same. We, we can cry out to God. We can pour out our hearts to him. We can bring our troubles and concerns to him. We, we can pray to him. So let's think about what we learn from David in prayer in verses 13 to 18 of the psalm. But first of all, I want us to think about who we pray to. Who we pray to. Who do we pray to? Now you, you might think, well, that's, that's a silly question, Mark. We, we, we pray to God. Well, yes. But who is the God that we pray to? When we pray to God, are we clear in our minds who it is that's, that we are speaking to? Look at what David says in verse 13. He says, I pray to you, O Lord. I pray to you, O Lord. And Lord there is in capital letters. And as some of you will be aware, when in the Old Testament we have the, the word Lord in capital letters, it's the words Jehovah or Yahweh. It's the name by which God made himself known to Moses at the burning bush. It is, we could say, God's personal name. God's personal covenant name. That, that speaks of him having entered into a, a binding relationship with, with his people. David says, I pray to you, O Lord. When the Lord's people pray to him, they pray to one who is great and glorious, but also to one who has graciously entered into a relationship with them. 
who has graciously committed himself to save them and to work all things together for their good. And when you pray to the Lord, when you pray to him in deep waters, you pray to one who is committed to you, one who loves you, one who is for you, as David prays to, to the Lord his God here, he, he refers to God's favor and love and salvation. I, I pray to you, O Lord, in the time of your favor, in your great love, O God, answer me with your sure salvation. And, and that's, what the, that's who the Lord's people pray to, one who has favored them, one who has loved them, one who has saved them. We pray to the one who loved us. And sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. And when we pray alone, when we pray together, we remind ourselves of who it is that we pray to. Yes, the Lord's people pray to a great and glorious God. But not a God who is distant or who is unconcerned. But the Lord God, the Lord who has entered into this relationship with them, to be their God, and they be his people. <coughs> when you pass through deep waters and find that all you can do is groan in prayer, You groan to the Lord your God who loves you and is for you and is committed to you. Who do we pray to? David says, I pray to you, O Lord. Let's think secondly about what we pray for. What we pray for and really we're Looking here simply at the fact that we pray for help, that there are many things that we pray for, many things that we pray about, but one of the things we pray for is, is help. We pray to the Lord for help. L listen to, or look at David's prayer in verses 14 and 15. Rescue me from the man, do not let me sink. D deliver me from those who hate me, from the deep waters. Do not let the flood waters engulf me, or the depths swallow me up, or the pit close its mouth over me. Now, now what strikes you about that? What, what strikes you about David's prayer in verses 14 and 15? Well, there, there may be various things that, that strike you uh, about that prayer, but... One thing that, that surely sh strikes us about that prayer in verses 14 and 15 is that it's a prayer of weakness. David is praying here from a position of, of weakness. He, he goes back to those deep waters he, he spoke about at the, at the beginning of the psalm. He says, Lord, rescue me from the, the mire. Do, do not let me sink. He speaks about those enemies he, he referred to in, in verse 4, those who hated him without reason. He says, deliver me from, from those who hate me, from the deep waters. Do not let the flood waters engulf me or, or the depths swallow me up or, or the pit close its mouth over me. The, the, those who hated David, they, they had the upper hand. And, and, and he was sinking. And, and he could tell that, that he was sinking. And he, he, couldn't, he couldn't get himself to the surface. He, he couldn't get his head above water. He, he needed God to, to help him. And in weakness, he, he cried out to the Lord. Now, now, when we think about King David, we don't usually think about weakness, do we? As a young man, David fought a liar. <laughs> And he fought a bear. And he fought a giant. And he beat them all. 
As an older man, he became king and he, he reigned over the nation and he, he led armies into battle. We read about King David and we think of him as a, a mighty warrior, a, a strong man. A man of, of courage. And yet here in this psalm, David's not ashamed to admit his weakness. He's not ashamed to say, Lord, I, I'm sinking. He, he's not ashamed to, to tell the Lord that he, that he needs help. And, and to ask the Lord to, to reach down and, and rescue him and, and deliver him. David here is very aware of his weakness. And he's also aware of the Lord's strength. And so he goes to the Lord. He asks the Lord to rescue him, to, to deliver him. And, and this goes to, to the heart of, of what prayer is, doesn't it? What, what, what is prayer? You know, if, we, if we were asked in one sentence to, to describe what prayer is, what, what would we say? What, what is prayer? Well, there are perhaps different sentences we could come up with that, that would be biblically correct. But one sentence we could perhaps come up with it is to say the prayer is weak people crying out to a mighty God. Prayer is weak people crying out to a mighty God. You, you think of a, a little child just a few years old who's been walking a long way and the, their legs are tired and they, they can't go much further. And they, they hold out their arms for a strong father to, to lift them up. And prayer is the weak children of God holding out their arms to their father, their father in heaven to, to lift them up. And this is where the Christian life begins. Begins with people seeing their sinfulness and their weakness, their inability to do anything about their sinfulness, and coming to God and saying, Lord, help me. Lord, save me. Lord, forgive me. And it's at this point that many people resist. <laughs> many people will not cry to God for salvation from sin and hell because they're not willing to admit that they're sinners. Or if they are willing, willing to admit that they're sinners, they're not willing to admit that there's, there's nothing that they can do about it. They're not willing to admit that they're weak. They're not willing to admit that they depend entirely upon God's grace and, and God's power. They're not willing to, to cast themselves upon a, a crucified saviour. And, and you will, will never be saved. Unless you admit your sin and your weakness. And you go to God and say, God have mercy on me a sinner. You go to God in prayer. And on the basis of what Jesus did on the cross, you, you ask him to, to save you. To rescue you from sin and from hell. To, to deliver you. That's where the, the Christian life begins. In weakness, crying out to God for, for salvation. But, but that's how the Christian life continues. That's how prayer continues in the Christian life. We keep on coming to God in our weakness and, and asking him for help. So when we, like David here, pass through deep waters, 
We, we tell God that, that we're weak and, and that we're sinking and, and that we're struggling and we, we ask him for help. In the challenges and the, the pressures of, of daily life, we, we tell God that, that we're weak and we, we can't do it alone and we, we ask him for help. In all the demands and the, the disappointments of, of Christian service, we, we tell God that, that we are weak and we, we need him to help. This, this is why, really, prayerlessness is a sign of pride. Because when we do not pray, what, what are we doing? When we do not pray, when, when we do not ask God for help, we in effect say to God, I, I don't, need, don't need your help. I'm, I'm strong enough. I, I can manage. I can get by. I can do this myself. I don't need to ask you for help. That's what we're effectively doing, isn't it, when we, when we fail to pray? Oh, but, but let's not be proud. Let's not be self-reliant. But let's day by day see our weakness and, and cry to God for help. So who we pray to, we pray to the Lord. What we pray for in our weakness, we, we pray for help. But thirdly, let, let's think about how we pray. How we pray. Moving on to verses 16 to 18. Answer me, O Lord, out of the goodness of your love. In your, in your great mercy, turn to me. Do not hide your face from your servant. Answer me quickly, for I am in trouble. C come near and rescue me. Redeem me because of my foes. In, in, in David's prayer here, we, we see something that is found in many of the Psalms that's found in many of the prayers of the Bible. But I don't know, I, I wonder if it's something that's perhaps been lost. Something the churches perhaps have lost in, in the West in the, the 21st century. And it's this. David reasons with God as he prays. In other words, David does not just ask God for help, but he also gives God reasons to do this. He doesn't just ask God to help him, but he tells God why God should help him. You know, for, from time to time, the, the Christian Institute um, will send out letters, emails, whatever, asking us to, to write to our MP about a, a certain issue, perhaps a certain issue that's of particular interest to, to Christians, and, and they may say, look, there's this issue coming, and we, we'd advise that you write to the MP, and they, they'll tell us a bit about the issue, they'll tell us what the issue is, why it's important, why we should be concerned, and then they, they give some suggestions that they give several arguments, reasons that we can use in, in writing to the MP, they'll say, they'll say, pick out two or three of them and say to the MP, we're, we're concerned about this legislation for, for this reason and that reason and the other reason. And that's the kind of thing David uses here as he prays. He, he, he brings reasons for God to do the things that he's asking for. So, Let's look at it more closely. David asks God to work because of who God is. Verse 16. Answer me, O Lord, out of the goodness of your love. In your great mercy, turn to me. So David doesn't just say to God, to the Lord, answer me, O Lord, turn to me. He says, answer me, O Lord, out of the goodness of your love. In your mercy, turn to me. Lord, come and help me because you are good, because you love me, because of your mercy. The, the love that, that David refers to here is, is God's covenant love. David's praying here, Lord, you, 
You have loved me. You, you have saved me. You have bound yourself to me. So help me. Now that I'm in a time of need. He prays, Lord, you're loving and merciful. So, so be faithful to your character and, and be loving and merciful to me at, at this time of need. He reminds himself of what God has said about himself in his word. And he uses that in prayer. And, and, and you and I, we, we can do the same. When we pray, we can reason with God on the basis of his character. So you, you can pray to God and say, Lord, I'm... I'm passing through deep waters. But Lord, I, I know that you, you love me. I, I, I know that you're good. I, I know that you're merciful. So, so come and help me, Lord. You, you can pray to God and say, Lord, I, I've got this decision to make and I, I don't know what to do. But Lord, I know that you are wise. You, you are all wise. So, so please, Lord, give, give me wisdom and help me in this. You, you can pray, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with this, with this person. You, you, you know how difficult I'm, I'm finding this person. And Lord, I, I know I, I need to be patient with them. And, and Lord, you, you are patient. You are so patient with me, Lord. So, so help me then to be patient with them. You can pray for the salvation of sinners. And you can pray, Lord, you are a God of grace and mercy. You delight to be gracious. So please, come and, and save sinners. Reason with God in prayer on, on the basis of his character, on the basis of who he is. Uh, and, and then David asks God to work because of his relationship with God. Verse 17, do not hide your face from your servant. Answer me quickly for I am in trouble. David says, Lord, I'm, I'm your servant. And you, you are good to your, your servant, so, so come and help me. If this evening you're a, a servant of God, you're, you're a child of God, you, you have a strong reason that you can bring to God in prayer, a strong argument that you can use with God in, in asking him to help you. Lord, we see in your word that you help and keep your servants, that you, you strengthen your children. Lord, I, I'm one of your servants. I'm one of your children. Come and, and help me through this. Oh, you're, you're praying for somebody else in, in the fellowship who, who's going through a, a particular trial. And you say, Lord, this, this, this beloved person, they're, they're, they're a servant of yours. They're, they're a child of yours. So, so come and, and help them be, because they're your servant, they're your child. And then David asks God to do what he has promised to do. David was the king, the, the leader of God's people. Perhaps he fell back to a, a promise that, that the Lord had made to a, an earlier leader of his people. A promise that the Lord made to, to Joshua. Deuteronomy chapter 31. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified. The Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. The Lord himself goes before you and, and will be with you. He'll never leave you or forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. And so David prays, verse 18, Come near. Be near to me, Lord. Rescue me. Redeem me because of my foes. He prayed that the Lord would be near him in deep waters, just as, as he had promised. Think of the lovely promise in Isaiah 43. Promise that we can pray, Lord. You say in Isaiah 43, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. 
When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you, for I am the Lord, your God. What what powerful arguments we can use when we bring the the promises of God to him in prayer. We, We can pray for the spread of the gospel throughout the world because of what God has promised. Psalm 2, verse 8, he promises his son, ask of me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. We, we pray for the salvation of souls because of what God has promised. Matthew chapter 1, you will give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. We pray that all things, even the hardest things, will work for the good of God's people because God has promised that all things will work together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. We pray for God to be with us at all times because he's promised, as we've just read, never to leave us nor forsake us. We we pray for the return of Jesus Christ because God has promised. Because Jesus Christ says, Behold, I come quickly. And so we pray, come, Lord Jesus. And so we have David here reasoning with the Lord. He's not just asking the Lord to do things. He's giving the Lord reasons that he should do things on the basis of God's character and on the basis of his relationship with God and on the basis of what God has promised. And when we know the Lord is our God, we, we can do the same. So we thought about who we pray to the Lord and what we pray for we pray for helper and how we pray we we, we bring reasons to the Lord let's think for a moment about Jesus Christ in prayer we've seen over the past weeks that Jesus Christ sang this psalm And that this psalm takes us to him and his sufferings, that this psalm is is quoted of him in the New Testament. There there are many things, aren't there, that we can say about Jesus Christ. And one thing we can say about him is that he was a man of prayer. There, There are, of course, many other things that we can say about Jesus Christ. That's not the only thing we would say about him, but it certainly is something we can say about him. He was a man of prayer. He prayed throughout his life. He he prayed at significant points in his life. So, for instance, in Luke's Gospel, at at his baptism, the Holy Spirit comes down upon him like a dove. The Father speaks from heaven. Luke tells us that this happened as he was praying. Then a little later, Luke tells us that The night before Jesus chose the the twelve apostles, he he spent the night in in prayer to his Father. And he prayed when he passed through deep waters. In the upper room with his disciples. In the Garden of Gethsemane, as we read earlier. As he hung upon the cross, Jesus prayed. And not only did he pray when he passed through deep waters, he prayed for his people when they passed through deep waters. We also read earlier in Luke chapter 22, of the the conversation that that Jesus had with with Simon Peter shortly before he was arrested and died. Luke 22, 31. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. Jesus told Simon Peter that Satan was going to sift him as wheat. Satan was going to put him through the mill. We, we, we use that language sometimes, don't we? So and so is being put through the mill. Well, Satan was going to put Simon Peter through the mill. Simon Peter was going to pass through deep waters. And 
Jesus said, but I have prayed for you, Simon. That your faith may not fail. And it didn't, did it? And in heaven now, Jesus Christ continues to pray for his people as they pass through deep waters. As you pass through deep waters of different kinds at different times, your Savior Jesus Christ prays for you. I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And again, then this psalm shows us David. David in prayer, there's much we learn from him. But it takes us beyond David. To the prayers of our great saviour, Jesus Christ.